Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, Greg and I review the Canon new F1, which was Canon's third professional single lens reflex camera for the 35 millimeter format introduced in 1981 and allegedly produced until 1992 and still sold until 1994. One important historical context, and it is a little bit confusing because the original Canon F1 introduced in 1970 carries the same name and a very similar look, and then saw an update in 1976 as the Canon F1N, and the camera that we are discussing here today is the so-called Canon New F1, which in many ways is a more advanced camera and shouldn't be compared directly to those. Um, because it comes with different viewfinders and a couple of different features and it's in the same lineage and it also features the um, original Canon FD mount introduced in 1970 but it is um, a different camera with a confusing name and I've fallen into the same trap here that I confused the two different cameras at first. So we're discussing the Canon new F1 in this review and we took the camera out as always for a photo walk in and around Würzburg. Um, in the morning when it was still overcast, we shot some Lomochrome Color 92, which we had reviewed here on the channel before. And then later during the day when there was more light available, we switched to Ilford Delta 100 and um, threw in some wide open shots because we got the unique opportunity to test the legendary 50 millimeter F1.2 Canon lens and I really enjoyed shooting that and especially I'm um, shooting it wide open with the Delta 100. We get some really nice results and we can't wait to share them with you. So let's take a closer look at the features, um, specialties, accessories and lenses for this very nice Canon new F1. So what about the features, lenses and accessories? The Canon new F1 came only in black and is really built to last. The all metal construction weighs around 795 grams and it comes with a horizontally traveling focal plane shutter made of titanium, which was quite advanced of course for the time. And what I found interesting is that there is an electronically controlled shutter speed range between eight seconds and one sixties of a second and an, a mechanically controlled range between one nineties of a second and one two thousandths of a second. Um, there's also an ISO dial here with a range between ISO 6 to 6400 and um, the same dial also features an exposure compensation mode um, and both of them have a lock function which prevents you from accidentally turning them so you really need to make an effort in order to set your ISO or uh, exposure compensation and then of course it makes sense to return it to the original setting. Um, the camera features an aperture priority, shutter priority and manual mode and the camera also comes with a self timer, a film rewind lever and even an eyepiece shutter to avoid stray light for longer exposure. So you can really see they threw in a couple of pro features here that we wouldn't see on any kind of regular single lens reflex camera for the amateur or consumer market. The Canon F1 system is quite modular, but please note that for the viewfinders, these are only compatible between the first two um, iterations of the camera that I mentioned in the introduction. And the Canon new F1 comes with five different um, viewfinders that are only working on this particular model here. And we only had the so-called AE Finder FN here available. And in this particular case, when using this finder, setting the shutter speed dial to A engages a small switch on the finder, which then puts the camera into an aperture priority auto exposure mode. And the normal meter display on the right side then disappears from the viewfinder. And you get an additional one at the bottom indicating the selected uh, shutter speed um, from the automatic exposure mode, depending on the aperture that you've selected. And this is potentially a little bit confusing since the, the same piece of information can be then found at a different place. 
the through the lens metering on the Canon F1 was quite advanced at the time and um, it's also important that you have a built-in hot shoe in this particular finder here and that it flash syncs at 1 90th of a second with a regular flash and the camera runs with a 4LR44 6 volt battery that is hidden behind the so called action grip here, which can be removed, and then there can be a camera placed in here, which I found interesting as a feature and where to place the battery. And please also note that the camera runs without a battery, which I found interesting. So if they would ever drain um, and would ever die on you, so to speak, you can still use the mechanically controlled shutter speed range, which I've mentioned before. So everything between 1 90th of a second and 1 2000th of a second still works. The original Canon F1, as briefly touched on in the introduction, introduced also the FD mount. And in the time frame between 1970 and 1979, um, Canon went all in and introduced a total of 68 different lenses ranging from a 7.5 millimeter all the way up to an 800 millimeter focal length. So quite impressive and also you can still use um, most earlier FL and R series lenses. They can be mounted on the FD mount but they must be used in a stop down metering um, uh, mode uh, to work properly. Um, and what I found interesting, basically, when this camera here was introduced in 1981, it could tap into the entire pool of lenses that were already available. So quite interesting for many professionals, of course. Um, as can be expected um, from such a professional tool at the time, um, it came with all sorts of other accessories. And just to keep it short, there was uh, 13 different focusing screens available, a motor wind and a bulk film chamber, which allowed it to shoot um, up to 100 frames. And the regular bag that I have here only features a memo holder that you could kind of expect. But one interesting feature is hidden on the upper left corner here. And this is the so-called meter mode selector. And it comes with three different mode modes. Uh, the normal mode means that when half pressing the shutter, you are activating the light meter. And it's only activated then. In the hold mode, um, when half pressing the shutter, it is activated for 16 seconds, which is great for manual reading of a scene and taking multiple readings. And then um, the light mode is basically the same, also on for 16 seconds, but it also illuminates the aperture scale, which is great for shooting in low light situations. From a collector's perspective, um, there were a couple of special editions of this camera, for instance, one for the US Navy and one for the Olympic Games in, in Los Angeles, introduced in 1984. And then uh, there was a special commemorative edition for the 50th anniversary of Canon coming with a golden Canon logo, which of course is interesting from a collector's perspective.
So what about the handling in our personal impressions? The Canon new F1 feels really, really nice and solid, but some of the controls are not particularly intuitive from today's perspective. So for instance, switching from the manual metering mode to the aperture priority mode uh, was a little bit tricky, to be honest, and then it was a bit confusing in the viewfinder to see the same piece of information displayed somewhere else. Of course, you get used to that, but arguably many other later uh, cameras solved the same problem in a much better fashion. And to be fair, this is a professional camera and it should also be judged accordingly. And um, theoretically, um, we would argue this camera lives up to all sorts of photographic challenges. So you can use it for close-up photography, for really high-speed photography, um, with a one two thousandth of a second shutter speed, plus um, um, kind of a, a bulk chamber, for instance, shooting 100 frames and so on, and the motor wind. So you can really, really do a lot of things with this particular camera. And our review here um, with one lens and one finder approach doesn't do it full justice, I would say. Um, arguably, there are, if this is the setup that you want, it is a little bit too heavy and bulky for that. And there are arguably a lot of smaller, lighter and more compact cameras out there that are better suited um, for this purpose. So I could think of uh, models from Pentax, Olympus, Leica, Minolta and many other manufacturers that would do a better job for the kind of use case that we had at hand here. But again, to be fair, this is a professional camera coming with all sorts of additional features um, that we hardly used in our test. And where you could argue if these are important to you, then um, it's definitely worth taking a closer look at this particular camera. And especially this version here from 1981, the more advanced, more refined version that already has a really nice ISO range and all sorts of additional tested um, add-on features that really work nicely. And also this bulky finder that it came with, um, while it is relatively large, it also is quite advanced and um, superior to many other finders that you would see on the market. And having that built-in hot shoe plus through the lens metering is of course also very convenient if you're using it. Um, also on the positive side, and uh, what I find worth mentioning is that it, the, the viewfinder was really, really nice and it made it easy to accurately focus the f1.2 lens that we tested here. And the only thing that we noticed is that it seems like the Lomochrome Color 92 film didn't get as much light as it could have um, here and there. So we got a couple of frames that felt a little bit underexposed and a little bit grainy, like it could have used a bit more light. And I'm a bit uncertain whether this is just the limitations of the film that become apparent here and where we could have just overexposed it a bit more to give it more light. Um, or whether the light meter got a little bit confused on, on that particular overcast morning by that softbox effect from the sky meeting a relatively dark um, ground floor. I tend to think it's the limitations of the film and not so much the limitations of the metering. Later during the day, you can really see the great results that we got with the black and white film and the perfectly exposed um, negatives here. So overall, a really, really nice camera and great setup. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and our review of the Canon new F1. A very solid and capable camera with all sorts of features through the lens metering, a maximum aperture, a maximum shutter speed of one two thousandths of a second, 
and a, a wide array of fantastic lenses and accessories. If this fits your needs, then it's the perfect camera. If you have more basic needs, then I think something much lighter and more compact will do as well. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.